typically use a CSS method. And let's in our for statement, we're going to say when the variable i is equal to zero or set it as zero, and when i is less than number images length, the the number of values in the array length, uh, array number images, and i plus plus, so increase the value by one every single time this statement is run. And we're going to say document right and we're going to create an image uh, HTML tag so image source close that tag and here we're going to basically insert the appropriate image file location so I'm just going to add in the appropriate uh, array value so number images and then I And if we go back to our page and we refresh it, there you go. We have all the images displaying at the top. Now actually, I'm going to go ahead and uh, relocate all the files there too. So if we go back to our JavaScript file here, we are going to create a folder called images. And inside that folder, we're going to create another folder called clock. And I'm just going to copy and paste all of my uh, image files from another folder. So I'm just going to paste it right here. So if I just change the views, there you go. Those are all of the files that we have there. And since these links are now working, if we refresh this page, there you go. All of the files or all the images are displaying at the very top. Now that's how we preload an image. However, what we want to do is we want the preloaded image to not appear. And how we're going to do that is by creating a style, a CSS style, right here. So style, quotes, and then we're going to say display, none. That's all we need. So if you refresh the page, there you go, nothing displays. And I'm just going to show you guys one more part here, which is also important. If, for example, I take this uh, file and open it in Firefox, it's going to say the current time, uh, everything is going to be the same, but if you see the very top, the margin is slightly different, and that's because the default margin and padding value in Firefox is different from that in Chrome and every single uh, browser will be slightly different from each other. So just to uh, iron that out, we're going to create a small uh, CSS um, uh, property uh, up at the top. So CSS type text CSS style close style tag and we're going to say everything should have a padding and margin of zero. So there you go. If I refresh this page, everything is up at the upper right. If I refresh this page, everything is also at the upper right and they both look exactly the same. So that's just an importance of using um, some resetting CSS uh, properties at the very top whenever you're uh, making a new website. So now that we have finally done that, let's go back to our preloaded image scripts, which is actually done. So we are going to say, uh, go back to where the AM or PM was, and now this will have a proper location of pointing to where the preloaded AM images and the second part here will have the proper uh, image location for where the the preloaded PM images and then once we've defined uh, dis um, displaying the correct AM or PM image we also want uh, the midnight image to be displayed correctly so that um, when it's 24 hours or 12, um, 12 p.m. how it displays in JavaScript is not saying it's 12 it displays it by saying it's uh, 24 or 0 and we don't want it to be 24 or 0 so first of all we're going to uh, change it make it so that whenever the number of hours is above 12 we want it to be 
whatever number it is right now, minus 12. So for hours displayed as less than 12, say if parts 0 is greater than 13, so if the hour section is greater than 13, we want its value to be whatever it was before, minus 12. And there's also one more important thing. I, have, I want you guys to uh, insert one more thing here, plus quote quote. So before I told you, if we go back to the Firefox browser and that this whole part here at the time is in a large uh, string value, well what happens when we insert it here in a mathematical equation, because the part 0 is ultimately containing a uh, numerical string value, this, this uh, mathematical equation does compute and in the process of doing so it actually changes the value from a string to a uh, uh, integer value, integer type. And later we're going to use a uh, function that requires the containing variable to be in a string format. So we're going to change this back from a number to a string by including the plus double quotes here. So include that part and that's basically saying if the hour is greater than or equal to 13 we want it to be uh, minus 12. So if it's 13 p.m. we want it's going to display as 1 p.m. And if it's 0, which is denoting midnight, so when parts is uh, equal to 0, we want it to be displayed as 12 instead of uh, displaying as 0. So we're going to say parts 0 is equal to 12. And there we include it in a string form. If we want it to be an integer form, it will look like this. So we want it to be a string form, just so just include the quotes there. Now that we def now that we've uh, displayed how we want our uh, parts to locate it in, actually let's check out what actually displays. So if we say um, we want uh, the current time and the current hour and the AM and PM to display, so we're going to write document to write parts zero um, plus plus uh, AM or PM plus brackets or break tag. And if we go back to the page, reload. So actually, it's uh, we don't have the the correct PM file, the image tag credit created in the HTML form. But if we take a look, it is seven, which is nineteen minus twelve. So it's seven PM, and it is uh, seven PM, not seven AM right now. So it is displaying correctly. And next, we are going to go through how to. Uh, change everything into an HTML friendly format. So in order to do that, first I'm just going to uh, delete all these, we don't need those anymore. We're going to create a new array. So we're creating a lot of arrays in this tutorial. And this one's going to be called time array. A new array. And we're going to create a for statement. So for variable i is equal to 0. We want i is equal to um, when it is less than the number of uh, parts currently available. So it's going to be run three times, for once for hour, once for uh, minutes, once for seconds. We want it to uh, run through those three times. We're going to create an if statement saying when the length is one digit, so length is equal to one, we want the first number to be zero because otherwise uh, it will just display that single digit and that's going to affect the the thick the width of our total time clock and it's 
going to be constantly changing. So we always want the filler zero inserted in there. So if the digit is less than two or if the digit length is one, we want the HTML output to be as follows. So time array i is equal to the first image, which is going to be zero. So create an image tag. And source is going to be where our zero dot gif file is located. So number number images zero. And plus image source once again. Number images is going to be uh, this one's act going to be the actual digit, so it's going to be parts i uh, whatever is displayed inside there. So basically, the first um, is saying that if the digit is length, create uh, two image tags. The first one being the having the source for the zero dot gif file. And the second image being the correct uh, correct time time number being displayed, and since parts i is actually uh, in an integer format, we are going to change it back to a string format here, or it's it's a, sorry it's a string format, and we're going to change it back to an integer format. So parse int parentheses and closing parentheses. So if we say um. Let's try document write uh, what we just created. So let's say the first array val value in the array time array. So time array zero. And we go back here, reload it. There you go. It's seven o'clock and it is only one digit. So the four statement is being run. So the first image zero is being uh, displayed and the second image for the number seven is being displayed. So once we get back here, um, and then I'm just going to write the else if part. Else if the digits have the number has two digits. So else if parts length is equal to two, then write then I'll put the following HTML. So time array i is going to then equal to once again two image tags image source close image source close so the first one is going to be number images it's not going to be zero it's going to be parts i and then car character at zero. So this is why we wanted to wanted the format to be in string up until now because the ca the character at function only works for uh, for strings and there is no equivalent for numbers. And now that this isn't a string, we want to change it back into a number. So we're going to add another parentheses and say so want it to be parsed as integer. And we do the same thing for the second number. So plus that number images, then parse int parentheses parts i character at 